All of my friends for years told me, no, begged me, to stay off of Craigslist. After reading about some of the horror stories, I can understand why they would make such a comment. Rapists, murderers, molesters, and people who just flat out steal from you were being busted daily on the service. It was actually creeping me out. The one time I tried it, to give away a really nice fountain, whoever took it just knocked the whole fountain over and just took the pump, leaving me with a mound of concrete that was once worth over $500. I vowed never to use it again. This left me with the recycling resurface where people come and pick up your used goods. You see, I really hate wasting products when I have paid good money for them. I will sometimes use a product until it is down to the very last drop of life and then keep it around. I was getting married, so I wanted to clean a lot of the junk up that I had laying around like a hoarder. I just couldn't see wasting it. Some of the junk I was able to give to a recycling company and some of it I could actually throw away. But then there was this first computer that I'd ever used. I took a liking to this machine and even though it was outdated and couldn't even run the latest software, I thought maybe someone else could use it. So I listed it on our local recycling service with this ad older computer needs some love and care could make someone happy i haven't used it or turned it on in years perhaps you can do something with it ms dos installed comes with a monitor and keyboard come pick up on porch at 7576 starry and way in san jose california it will be boxed and ready to go i didn't want to just leave a computer on the porch so i boxed it up and carefully taped it up Perhaps if I had just left the actual computer on the porch, no one would have wanted it and tossed it aside and then would have saved me from all of the trauma. I left for work the next day and when I came home, the computer was gone with a thank you note. Satisfied, I went into the house and made some dinner. A few moments later, I was sitting in the living room comfortably with my feet up on the coffee table when my phone rang, hello? The computer doesn't work, a woman said into the phone. I am sorry, it's pretty old. If you don't want it, I can come and get it. Don't worry about it. As I stood to head off to bed, glass shattered in my face as something went crashing through my front window. I shielded my eyes soon enough so no glass could get in. I wish I could say the same about my hands. Tiny shards of glass were stuck on the outside of my hands and littered in my hair. I looked at the back of my hands and blood was trickling from some of the wounds. My hands shaking, I shook the glass off of the object and realized that it was my keyboard with a note wrapped around it. I unraveled the note. Thanks for nothing. I drove 40 miles to pick up this piece of crap I won't forget. The glass was all over the floor. Forgetting I was barefoot, I started back toward the couch to pick up my cell. Tiny splinters of glass stunned the bottom of my feet as I fell to the sofa. Son of a bitch, I growled as I dialed 911. I sat on the couch waiting for the cops to come. They were all the way on the other side of the city, and since we live in a pretty safe area, it isn't their first route. As I waited, the blood on my feet dried, and I watched the window to make sure the creep was gone. Just as I started to get up and get away from the open window, despite all the glass all over the floor, two ram sticks came flying at my head like ninja stars. The first one missed my eye socket by a few centimeters and grazed the side of my temple. The other, I wasn't so lucky, Pain burst on the side of my nose as the corner of the ram sliced into my nostril and stuck there. What the fuck? I hobbled into the bathroom with new cuts on the bottom of my feet and blood pouring from my nose. I took the ram out of my skin 
and held a wet washcloth up to my torn skin. It burnt like a bitch. It was probably still 20 minutes before the cops would even come into my neighborhood, and I wondered now if I should call an ambulance as I bandaged up my feet. Then I heard footsteps, glass crunching under shoes, if I wasn't mistaken. I froze. The bathroom door was open and the light was on. If I closed the door, it would be obvious that I was in the bathroom, so I crept behind the door, open door, hoping this monster wouldn't see me. What a stupid place to hide, asshole. Stabbing pain pierced my eyes as this creep shoved wires through the crack in the door. I shoved the door shut and locked it before she could get in. The wires hung between the door and the door frame. With one good eye, I could see my blood on the tip of the yellow wire. It must have been one of the power supply wires stripped to cause that much damage. I pressed more wet washcloths to my face until I could see. Everything was quiet until the power supply came crashing through the bathroom window. Through my strained vision, I could almost make out a small figure in a hoodie jump into my bathroom through the window. She laughed as she pushed me against the door and wrapped power cables shaped into a noose around my neck. I tried to fight her off, but she was very limber and I could not see. I felt the cable tighten as she knocked me to the ground and pulled. I gasped tried to take the cable off, but it was too tight. As she pulled and yanked from behind, I started choking and begging for release. She laughed as she pulled harder, trying to lift me by the cable. As the last attempt at a breath stole my consciousness, I heard the sirens approaching. I felt the cable loosen as she disappeared. When I came to, I was sitting in a hospital bed. A detective was waiting for me to answer questions. They had checked my cell phone and realized somebody was texting me about a computer. When they checked the number, it was a prepaid phone with a fake address. No one ever came back, but I know she is still out there. Do you use any of the online services? I recommend that if you do, and you are going to meet somebody with a trade, Never give them your home address. Never meet them in private. No. Don't even give them your real phone number. Give them a Google Voice number. Because anything these days can be traced. <laughs>